Hi, welcome to EPG Patshala Spanish. We are in the paper called Intermediate Grammar, and today in this module, we are going to be dealing with the common errors in the Spanish language. The objective of this module is that in any other language which we are trying to pick up, we commit mistakes. And in Spanish also, we are going to be making mistakes. But we can avoid these pitfalls if we try to learn all the common errors that are made while speaking Spanish or writing Spanish also. So let us have a look at all these common errors. The first thing that we should be careful about is the capitalization in Spanish. Spanish and English capitalizations are very different. It is much less common in Spanish. So, the capitalization is very much less common in Spanish. Many words that must be capitalized in English cannot be in Spanish. So, the words that are capitalized in English are not capitalized in Spanish. So, go through the following to make sure that you are not over capitalizing your Spanish. You have a list of words. You are supposed to learn them up and understand that you should not make capitals in these in Spanish which are capital in English. 1. The first person singular subject. Pronouns. Do not take capital letters. So I repeat the first person singular subject pronouns. The first person sing singular subject pronouns do not take capital letters. For example, he said I love you. In Spanish would be dijo yo te amo. So the I is not necessarily in capital letters. It is not in capital letters. Never. Yo te amo. Right? So the yo always comes in minusculas, in small. And the I in English always comes in capital. I. I eat. I love. I walk. I talk. Yo como. Yo amo. Yo hablo. The second thing that has to be kept in mind are the days of the weeks, the months of the year, etc. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. In Spanish, it is lunes with, without capitalization, martes without capitalization, miércoles without capitalization, etc. We also have things like January, February, March, enero, febrero, marzo, like e small, cf of febrero small, marzo m small. All these are in small letters. The titles. We can only capitalize the first word and proper names if any. So for example, The General in His Labyrinth, which is a very important book. El General en su Labyrinto. The General in His Labyrinth, El General en su Labyrinto. Like Water for Chocolate, which is a very important movie. Como Agua para Chocolate. So the English has water with capital and chocolate with capital in spanish this only como with the capital otherwise it is como agua para chocolate fourthly the languages for example examples spanish russian english french espanol ingles russo frances all these are capitals in english but in spanish they are minusculas fifth are the nationalities Right? So when I say I'm Indian, I will say soy indio without the capitalization. Soy indio. He has a Spanish flag. Tiene una bandera española. She met a French person. Encontró un francés. French in Spanish is francés without the uh, mayúsculas. Española is Spanish but without the mayusculas and indio is indian but without the mayusculas clear now the sixth one that has to be kept in mind is religion the names of most religions their adjectives and their adherents proper nouns are not capitalized in spanish so names of religions adjectives and their adherents proper nouns are not capitalized in spanish hinduism el hinduismo Note that there is an exception. When Islam is used as an adjective, it is written with a capital in the beginning. So, for example, Islam, El Islam with a capital Islam. 
but this is the only exception now let us move on to another set of rules which are called the false cognates there are many words that have the same roots in the romance languages and in english however there are also a great many falsos amigos or false cognates which look similar but are in fact very different this is one of the biggest pitfalls for students of spanish actual versus actual so for example we say actual means current or present el presidente actual vive in madrid the current president lives in madrid el presidente actual vive in madrid or the second example is actualmente which means currently or present or now actual means verdadero o efectivo so be very careful of what is the meaning that you wanting to wanting to communicate actual which is current or present or actualmente which is currently at present or now and actual means verdadero or efectivo also arena versus arena arena means sand and arena means amphitheatro redondel plaza so be very careful of which arena you are talking about the arena which means sand or amphitheatro redondel or plaza right complexion versus complexion complexion with an accent refers to one's constitution a makeup the temperament or a physical build complexion la tez el cutis o la piel another one which is the falso amigo is called the difference between discutir versus discuss discutir is stronger than discuss more like debate or more in the terms of an argument or argue discuss is hablar de or tratar de or comentar so discutir is a very strong argument or a debate and discuss is hablar tratar de comentar so be very careful when you talk about this educacion versus education is also a falso amigo educacion has a broader meaning than education the spanish world's best translation is upbringing which includes both school education as well as what a child learns at home so upbringing is the educacion education is best translated by formacion or enseñanza so the education is formacion académica or enseñanza académica another big mistake that students make which is a falso amigo is embarazada versus embarrassed embarazada means pregnant it can also be a noun una embarazada a pregnant woman an expectant mother embarrassed is avergonzado molesto or incomodo so be very careful estoy embarazado or embarazada means that you're pregnant right and if you're talking about you're ashamed or embarrassed then you say avergonzado molesto or incomodo familiar versus familiar familiar is an adjective which means in spanish family familiar domestic informal plain or colloquial so familiar means family family domestic informal plain or colloquial as a noun it refers to a relative or a close friend so as an adjective it means domestic informal plain or colloquial and as a noun it refers to relative or a close friend familiar is not only an adjective familiar conocido común familiarizado intimo etc have a different meaning altogether which is the adjective of the familiar patron versus patron patron can indicate a boss or owner as well as a pattern or a standard patron on the other hand is a patronizador or cliente so when you're talking about patron it can be your boss or owner but when you talk about the patron it can be the patronizador or cliente be very careful between the two 
the same sense preservativo versus, versus preservative preservativo indicates a condom and preservative is a conservador so be very careful that preservative is conservador and preservativo is a condom raro versus rare raro can mean rare but more commonly means odd or strange so raro is rare odd or strange and rare is poco común or exceptional so when you wanting to talk about something which is rare you will say poco común or exceptional in espanol the other falso amigo is recordar versus record recordar means to remember recall or remind and record is equivalent to record is equivalent to registrar inscribir or arabar another falso amigo is red versus red red refers to a network la red de airtel okay it refers to the network of airtel red is the color which means rojo so when you're talking about red it is talking to about a network so if you say la red the spaniards take it for uh, granted that you're talking about a network la red no funciona hoy the network is not working today but when you're talking about the color then you have to say rojo mi camisa es roja mi camisa es roja my shirt is red ropa versus rope ropa means clothing ropa is clothing and rope is a cuerda or una soga sano versus sane sano means healthy fit or intact es un chico sano he is healthy fit or intact for example salman khan es muy sano salman khan is very healthy right sane means cuerdo sensato or de juicio sano right so sane means cuerdo sensato or de juicio sano soportar versus support this is also a place where all of us have seen that many students make mistakes is soportar versus support soportar means to bear to carry to support to hold up or to withstand soportar means to bear to carry to support to hold up or to withstand no lo soporto which means i cannot tolerate it and support means apoyar it is a verb when we talk about the genders also there are many falsos amigos in general spanish nouns that end in o are masculine and those that are ending in an a are feminine this is a rule but there are some exceptions to this rule also masculine nouns that end in a and feminine nouns that end in o we are giving a list in the e text please take a print out of that list and remember it by heart so for example we have el aroma which is aroma or scent but aroma even though it is ending in a is el aroma la disco so disco ends in o but it is la disco and disco means the disco el canada which is canada even though canada is ending in a the article to be used is l la foto photograph even though the photo ends with o it is always feminine la foto clima for example ends in a but like the others it is el clima or climate right la mano the hand mano ends in o but it is la mano always feminine la mano el cometa the comet it is also ending in a el cometa but it is never la cometa it is always el cometa when you talk about a motorcycle la moto even though it is o even then it is la moto el cura even though it is ending it a it means the priest and it is el cura la radio also is another example where radio ends with o but it is always la radio other examples that we're going to be talking about is for example el idioma the language 
idioma is ending with a but it is always l idioma l mapa which is the map is always l mapa l morphema which is morphine is always l morphema l panorama which is panorama is always l panorama l planeta which is planet is always l planeta l poema which is poem is always l poema l problema which is a problem is always l problema l programma also in the same sense is program but it is always l programma l symptoma which is a symptom is always l symptoma l sistema which is a system is always l sistema other examples are l diagramma or the diagram or outline which is always l diagramma l dilemma which is dilemma is always l dilemma l diploma which is a diploma is always l diploma so l diploma in espanol l drama which is drama is always l drama not la drama ever l dia which is day it is always l dia even though it is ending in a so l dia l enigma which is enigma is always l enigma l schema which is outline is always l schema and continuing with the same list we can say l fantasma which is ghost l fantasma so we see that the list is quite long we also have l sofa which is sofa it is always l sofa l tanga which is thong or g string is always l tanga l telegramma which is always telegramma l telegramma is telegram l theorema which is theorem is always l theorema l tema which is theme is always l tema l tranvia also in the same sense is the street car but it always l tranvia l trauma also in the same sense is trauma but l trauma it remains l trauma now let us go to verbs which are different and have different meanings in spanish the first verb that we would like to discuss today is saber versus conocer saber and conocer can both be translated by the english verb to know so saber and conocer can both be translated by the english verb to know but they are used in completely different situations in spanish saber in spanish means to know a fact or to know how to do something it is often followed by an infinitive or a subordinate clause so saber means to know a fact or to know how to do something and the examples are no sé la respuesta i do not know the answer sabéis español do you know spanish sabemos nadar we know how to swim so these are knowing something to do how to do it in on the other hand conocer means to know someone or to be familiar with someone or something or somewhere so knowing someone or to be familiar with someone or something or some place it can only be followed by a direct object never by an infinitive or a subordinate clause remember that if the direct object is a person the preposition a must be used with conocer so the ex examples are conozco a tu madre i know your mother conozco a tu madre no conocen la obra de tagore no conocen la obra de tagore they are not familiar with tagore's work usted conoce nueva delhi are you familiar with new delhi the next verb that we would like to discuss today is kedar the use of the word kedar or the verb kedar can be very confusing and can be difficult to use and understand one of the most common uses of kedar is to arrange to meet it is used when we plan to meet people where can we meet donde podemos quedar so quedar is for arranging to meet donde podemos quedar quedar also means to come to an agreement 
This is normally used when two people discuss something and then come to an agreement. So, if you just want to ask something or someone, do you agree? You would say, estas de acuerdo? They all agreed not to tell you anything. Quedaron en decir, no decirte nada. They agreed not to tell you anything is quedaron en no decirte nada. We also use quedar to speak about the effects or result of something after something has happened. And it is similar to become, to end up or to be left. Maria became pregnant. Maria se quedó embarazada. Maria se quedó embarazada. Quedar can also mean to stay or to remain. He is going to stay at home tonight. Él va a quedar en casa esta noche. Él va a quedar en casa esta noche. Quedar can also mean to have left and also to have left over. There is no T left. No quedate. Note that there are many other uses of the verb quedar. You will learn them in the future modules that we are going to be doing. There are several different Spanish equivalents for the English verb to become, depending upon several factors. Ponerse is followed by an adjective and indicates an involuntary physical or emotional state. Hacerse and llegar hacer are followed by a noun or adjective and there are several different Spanish equivalents for the English verb to become, depending upon several factors. Ponerse is followed by an adjective and indicates an involuntary physical or emotional change. Me puse enfermo en Patna. I got sick in Patna. Me puse enfermo en Patna. Volverse is followed by an adjective and indicates a sudden profound change. Se volvió loco. Se volvió loca. She went crazy or he went crazy. Se volvió loco. Se volvió loca. Hacerse and llegar a ser are followed by a noun or adjective and indicate a change brought about by effort. Me hice ingeniero. I became an engineer. Me hice ingeniero. So, hacerse and llegar a ser are indicating a change brought about by an effort. Me hice ingeniero. Convertirse en and transformarse en are followed by a noun and usually indicate a change to a thing rather than a person. So, when you're talking about a change in a thing or a person rather than a person, then we use the verbs convertirse en and transformarse en. Realize. If you want to say realize in Spanish, you have to say darse cuenta, not realizar. So, realize in Spanish becomes darse cuenta, not real realizar. When I went to call you, I realized that I had lost your number. Cuando fui a llamarte, me di cuenta de que había perdido tu número. So, me di cuenta is I realized that. Me di cuenta de que había perdido tu número. Ask and ask for are also two different verbs in Spanish. To ask is preguntar, when you want to know something. And pedir is to ask for, when you want something like you are, want to ask her where she lived. Le pregunté donde vivía. I asked him for a cigarette. Le pedí un cigarro. Le pregunté donde vivía. I asked her where she lived. Y le pedí un cigarro. I asked him for a cigarette. So, preguntar donde vivía. You asked where she lived. And pedí un cigarro is you asked for a cigarette. Entradas. Billetes are for travel tickets. We use entradas for ticket to the theater or cinema or espectáculos. So, billetes are travel tickets and entradas are theater or cinema tickets. By the way, a showing in the cinema is el pase o la sesión. A performance at the theater is la función. So, for example, is 
for the tickets is there aren't any tickets left for the 8 o'clock showing. No quedan entradas para el pase de las 8. No quedan entradas para el pase de las 8. When you want to talk about your oldest or your youngest brother, you have to use mayor or menor. My oldest brother lives in Paris. Mi hermano mayor vive en Paris. Mi hermano mayor vive en Paris. Diane is my youngest daughter. Diana is my youngest daughter. Diane es mi hija menor. Or Diane es mi hija pequeña. So you can use hija menor or hija pequeña for conveying that she is your youngest daughter. Regarding and to respect are also different. You have to be careful with the difference between respeto a regarding and respeto respect. We have serious doubts regarding the safety of the braking system. Tenemos serias duda respeto a la seguridad del sistema de frenos. He has no respect for the law. No tiene respeto por la ley. So there are two different things that you're communicating. Tenemos serias dudas respeto a la seguridad del sistema de frenos and no tiene respeto por la ley. Common expressions which are usually mistaken for are in the morning por la mañana, early in the morning, temprano por la mañana, at midday, al mediodía, at lunch time, a la hora de comer, in the evening, por la tarde, at midnight, a medianoche, in the early hours of the morning, por la madrugada, very late at night, a las tantas. So, to conclude, what we would like to say is that we have given lists of all the common mistakes which are being made in Spanish. Take out a printout from the e-text section and deal with it in, uh, by learning them, memorizing them and doing the exercises which come in the self-assessment section of this module. And we will learn from our mistakes and we will make better Spanish usage in the future. Thank you for your attention.